But my perceptions are more and more in the baby mold. It's beginning to come out of my frontal lobes into my back brain. I'm beginning to more and more perceive things as maybes. Although, of course, the funny thing about maybe logic, your critics never notice that. I put things in maybe terms, and I notice almost all the really negative criticism I get is by people who assume because I'm not taking their stand, I must be taking the opposite stand. They have a yes-no logic. I put things in maybe. They assume that means I put it in either yes or no. They can't understand maybe at all. Hi, this is Chicho again, and uh, we're just going to continue with uh, the section that we're on right now, which is the factoring section. But we're going to do a little, little diversion and uh, just talk about uh, a, a certain concept in mathematics that I don't think is taught very well in general, or it was confusing for me uh, when I when I was well, I don't know if I was taught it or it was just uh, you know assumed that I, I'm supposed to know this, but. It's basically the concept of a let statement or substitution. And in mathematics, again, it's just a language, right? And we can manipulate language any way we want to get an idea across or to make a certain, certain concept easier to understand. And that's what the let statement is really about. Or that's what substitution is, you know, can be about, I guess. That's the best way of putting it. What, what happens is, you know, we're, we're given equations for, specifically when doing, um, you know, factoring polynomials. You know, we talked about prime factorization, that's series one. But right now we're sort of going off on factoring polynomials. And the reason we're doing this is basically because, you know, we want to break down our functions to what they're made out of. Because once we take a function and we break it down into its core elements, then we can look at the function and you know, try to figure out what what parts of it are common between other functions, right? What are its building blocks, right? That's why we're doing factoring. Now, so far we've been going off on, you know, we've learned uh, the simple trinomial, complex trinomial, difference of squares and GCF, right? And we started talking about the quadratic formula. And, you know, the quadratic formula and synthetic division, these two factoring techniques are going to give us a lot more power because we can, you know, we can go beyond just simple, simple polynomial functions, simple quadratic functions or simple trinomial functions, right? We can start actually factoring, factoring or breaking down more, uh, you know, functions that we can't easily break down into, you know, integers and multiply together, which is the case that's going to be in real life, right? So the quadratic formula and synthetic division are going to give us a lot more power. And what's going to happen with this power that we have, we're going to start going into functions, equations, that are, that are way more complicated, right? And what's going to happen is we're going to look at these functions, we're going to encounter functions that may not look like what you know look like we can do anything with them because they're not the you know the general form that we're used to seeing them in right so for example for the quadratic you know we talked about the quadratic formula and the quadratic formula is used for quadratic equations right to solve to break down quadratic equations and the terminology we've used so far is the following so so far we've got you know, basically we've learned about the quadratic formula and we've done like three examples like this where the discriminant is equal, you know, greater than zero, equal to zero, and less than zero. Where greater than zero gives you two x-intercepts, equal to zero gives you one x-intercept, and when the discriminant is greater than zero, uh, is less than zero, you got no x, no x-intercepts, right? Now, the terminology that you're basically going to encounter is, you know, if you have a quadratic equation like this, ax squared plus bx plus c, you can factor this out as x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, right? Now, this is true, but for me, this was initially when I learned this, this was a little confusing because this x and this x are, you know, for this expression, they're the same x. But what happens is you can get functions where it's not ax squared, but the x here is to a higher power. It's to the power of 4 or 6 or 8. And all you need to be able to use the quadratic formula or and to use simple trinomial factoring, complex trinomial factoring, is this power to be twice as much as this power, right? Following the properties of a polynomial, where the properties of a poly polynomial that we talked about in series 3a with uh, 
you know, uh, video number 89, 90, and 91, where the powers here must be into uh, what must be um, natural numbers, whole numbers. This is there's an x to the power of zero here, but we avoid that, right? Because anything to the power of zero is just one, right? So as long as the power on the x's is natural, and this uh, is natural number, and this power is twice as that power, the quadratic formula applies. And when I first learned how to use the quadratic formula, this confused me because every now and then we would get an equation where. You know, there were, you know, the questions that I would get is to factor something that wasn't just x squared, but x to the power of 4, x to the power of 6, x to the power of 8. So every now and then you would get equations like this. So you get ax to the power of 4 plus bx squared plus c. Now what happens in this case, the quadratic formula still applies, but it's no longer x that equals this, but this becomes x squared because the quadratic formula works for functions, for equations that are in this form. And this guy is not in this form. So what we have to do is convert this to something is in that, that's in this form, right? And knowing our you know, um, exponent rules, our radical rules, where we have something like this, we can break this down, right? x to the power of 4 is just x squared to the power of 2. So we can break this equation down to the following form. Now, if you take a look at this, this says x, ax squared to the power of 2 plus uh, bx squared. And what I'm going to do is going to put the bx squared in brackets, right? Plus c. Now, what we have here is this equation is in this form where the x here is the same as the x squared here, right? And this is where the confusion came with me when I first learned this was because right now, if we have this equation in this form, the quadratic formula is not x is equal to this anymore. It's x squared is equal to this. So the quadratic equation changes. It becomes. So it becomes x squared is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, right? So once you get an equation like this, all you have to do is realize that this expression here, this definition, isn't what x is equal to it's not just what this expression here is just not what x is equal to it's what x represents and re x here represents anything which is basically our boxes right when um, when i started for the introduction for the quadratic formula you know i wrote down the equation uh one form of the equation where I said we're going to talk about it further and this is really what we're doing right now we're sort of expanding on that concept and I wrote down the general function in the following form where I said your quadratic equation you could use for anything written in this form where it's ax to the power of 2n plus bxn plus c where n is an element of the natural numbers right but it goes beyond this because what happens is you can think about the quadratic equation as a box right so what you would have is a box squared plus b box plus c if you have anything in this form you can write that as let's shade this in so it's more clear so a box squared plus b box plus c is equal if you want to factor that it becomes box is equal to the quadratic formula and remember uh, we talked about this with the difference of squares a box or a square I call I like calling it a box because you can put things in a box right so the box represents anything you can put in right so anything so a anything squared plus B anything plus C you can factor out in this form okay and this becomes super handy because now what happens is we can factor quadratic or equations like this and this is no longer a quadratic equation or you could write it as a quadratic equation when you rewrite it right now what happens in mathematics which you know when we start doing higher level mathematics we're not going to use boxes right that's just it's you know it's 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 cute and all and it's uh, it, it's a great way to introduce the concept but the best way to you to you know work with this is not to put boxes here but to put a different letter so what we could end up doing is saying you know if let w equal x squared right 
And if we write it that way, what, what we end up having is, let's say in here, you wanted to factor this guy. What you could say is, let w equal x squared, right? So if you let w equal x squared, and that's, you know, that's the power of a language, right? You can, you can say anything you want as long as you stay consistent with whatever you're saying. So what you can do is break things down even further or condense things. That way you can write expressions like this in a form that you can actually understand, right? So as soon as we say let w equal x squared, well, x to the power of 4, if this is x to the power of 4, x to the power of 4 is x squared squared. x to the power of 2 to the power of 2, right? But we just said let w equal x squared. So we can write this equation as so we can write this equation as a w squared plus b w plus c. Now if we do it that way, then right away we notice that this is a quadratic equation, even though inside of it is embedded another function, right? Because this is this this right now becomes a function. W equals x squared. That's the same thing as like saying y is equal to x squared. But we're not going to use y or x because y and x are really generic. They're, we use those terms a lot, those letters a lot, to represent a Cartesian coordinate system and unknowns. So what we start doing, we start introducing other letters in the alphabet. And you can use any letter you want, right? Preferably not A, B, and C because they're already part of the quadratic formula, right? And you wouldn't use X and you generally don't use Y because this, if you're going to set it as a function, you're going to set this equal to Y or F of X, right? So you're, going to not, you're not going to use Y or F of X. You could use K, you could use H, you could use W, you could use Z. You can use almost any letter you want to create a new function. And that way you can substitute that into an expression that may not look like a quadratic formula and rewrite it so it looks like a quadratic formula and that way you can apply the quadratic formula, right? Which is a lot better than saying x squared is equal to the quadratic formula here because sometimes what you end up having inside the box is a much more complicated function.